No, it's gonna be a tough one. Better overall autofocus, EOS M3. Better low-light performance, G3X. Better external audio setup, EOS M3. Better internal audio right from the get-go, G3X. Max wide angle for vlogging, EOS M3 again. But bigger overall zoom range, G3X. More compact form factor, EOS M3 has it again. But overall build quality, we have to give it to the G3X. It's a hard decision. So finally, let's compare. Now this is a multi-part review, so should you be interested in only one or several of the chapters, go check out the video description, it has links to each of them. Now before we begin, let's get one fact straight right away. None of them do, so we're moving on. Now this could both be a video autofocus face tracking test and an internal audio test. I'm currently shooting the Canon G3X at its widest, which is a 24mm full frame equivalent. The corresponding lens on the EOS M3 side would be the 11 to 22 STM M lens, because it's the only lens in the M lens selection that can match the viewing angle of the widest end of the G3X. The G3X has a purely contrast detect autofocus system, and since there's not a lot of direct light hitting us right now, contrasts are relatively low, which is a lighting situation that makes it a little harder on the G3X, which is a good thing because you want to know what it's capable of when lighting conditions aren't perfect. The EOS M3 on the other side has Canon's own hybrid CMOS autofocus 3 autofocus system, which is a combination of contrast detection and face detection. So it should do a better job than the G3X in keeping my face in focus. Now if you're shooting both cameras from a selfie stick or a gorilla pod, of course the advantage when it comes to the viewing angle is on the EOS M3 side. Because it is an interchangeable lens mount system and you are able to put the 11-22 STM M lens on there. Still, the 24mm full frame equivalent of the G3X at its widest end held on a selfie stick pretty much gives you a nice aesthetic for vlogging as well. I'm a big proponent of the super wide angle, but it's a totally personal choice. It's almost dusk right now, so there's not a lot of available light. Still, both cameras should do a fine job in focusing on my face. Both lenses are stabilized, so you should get smooth video. So this is a good test for the low light capabilities of both these cameras. Currently the G3X should smoke the EOS M3, although the G3X has only a 1 inch sensor and the EOS M3 has an APS-C size sensor in it. So with both cameras ISO should be cranked up, but a little less so when it comes to the G3X. And if you take both these cameras outside on a bright sunny day with excellent lighting conditions, both auto exposure and focusing speed are decent enough to keep the operator happy. All the STM M lenses I tested pretty much performed the same way. I even got good results from the 200mm Teleend. The G3X at its 24mm wide end and the 100mm down towards the Teleend gave me very decent results. Only towards the far tail end of the G3X's super zoom range do you encounter problems severe enough to make your peace of mind go out the window. It's definitely not fun waiting for this camera to autofocus on the far tail end. In cases like these, you should either have a lot of time on your hands, be very patient or resort to manual focus. Now switching to manual focus mode with the EOS M3 is super easy. Just click left on the click wheel and you're there. You can now adjust focus manually via the focus ring on the lens. You can go very slowly, using your whole wrist. Or you can go fast, using only your fingers. Because the faster you turn the focus ring on the lens, the faster the focus travels. Meaning that you can breach the distance between two focal planes you want to hit very quickly by using only your fingers. With the G3X, like the EOS M3, manual focus mode is only one push of a button away. But in the case of the G3X, this button is located at the side of the lens barrel. Now, somewhat like with the EOS M3, you can change focus by using the focus ring on the lens. But with the G3X, it's a focus by wire system, so it's not actually you physically turning the lens and shifting lens elements around. It's done internally, electrically, and it moves in small increments. And it is not as precise by definition then, but if you put in a little time to get good at it, you can still hit focus very precisely. Still manually focusing is not quite as nice an experience as it is with the EOS M3. 
I messed up a little with this test because I should have used the 1855 kit lens on the EOS M3 while doing the slow light test. Currently the 11-22 super wide angle lens is on the EOS M3 which is a little bit slower than the kit lens, coming in at an f4 whereas the kit lens would have been an f3.5. Still you're gonna get a good idea of how well these cameras perform in low light situations compared to each other. Both cameras can be pushed to 6400 ISO, with the EOS M3 starting at 800 and the G3X starting at 125. Also, the G3X offers two more increments, the 4000 and 5000 increment between 3200 and 6400 ISO, which the EOS M3 does not. Now, if we take a closer look, we notice some things. On the G3X side, the highlights are overexposed and we're losing detail. Up here in the right corner, we can clearly see that the digital noise is more of a problem on the G3X side. With the G3X in low light situations, you're gonna get the brighter image. Then again, the highlights will be overexposed and you're gonna lose some detail. Whereas on the EOS M3 side, the highlights will retain more detail, but overall you're getting the darker image. Now, when vlogging at night, the EOS M3 with its hybrid face detection system has the upper hand when it comes to autofocus. Focus. Then again, the image is pretty dark, but we can take care of that a little in post-production. Watch for it, and there it is. We just brought up the shadows and the blacks a little. Now the G3X image, for these kinds of circumstances, is actually pretty bright. But with the G3X, we have a different problem. It's a nasty yellow tint that we need to get rid of. And there it is. We took care of most of the yellow tint, giving it a somewhat more naturalistic, desaturated nighttime look. Still, and this is very visible in this comparison, the G3X has a tendency to a yellow tint, the EOS M3 has a tendency rather to a reddish tint. It's almost painfully obvious in direct comparison, but if you watch each image by itself, it's really not that much of an aesthetic problem. After post-production color grading and a little tweaking, I actually like both these images very much. And now to finish it off, a comparison between post-production color grading and no post-production color grading. When it comes to the internal audio, you've probably noticed by now that the G3X has a problem. And that's the autofocus noise of the built-in lens. Because it does get picked up on the internal audio track. Which is a total bummer because the internal audio quality of the G3X is a lot better than that of the EOS M3. But unfortunately, the autofocus noise Fs it up pretty much. So this is pure EOS M3 internal audio. You can see me moving around the camera, tracking my face, but you're not picking up any kind of autofocus noise. And that's the case with all the EOS M3 M lenses because they all have virtually silent stepping motors. So with the EOS M3 using its native STM M lenses, you won't pick up any kind of autofocus noise. And again, if you're just talking into the G3X but moving around, the autofocus noise won't be as noticeable. Also, since the wind is picking up right now, unfortunately, the internal microphones of both cameras, the EOS M3 as well as the G3X, are located in such a way that you're not able to install something like micro wind muffs. But of course, you can use both cameras with external microphones, which I'm going to do right now. Alright, wind is picking up. This time it's external audio. The EOS M3 has my own custom setup on it with the Rode Video Mic ME and the G3X has the Rode Video Micro on it. Problem with the G3X, of course, you cannot use the flip up screen because the microphone and especially the wind muff block that screen. So with the G3X, we're gonna have to use a little adapter to make it sit higher. Also, since the Rode Video Micro is more sensitive than the internal audio, you're still picking up some autofocus noise from the G3X. Not as severely as before, but it is still audible. Now the wind muff of the Rode Video Micro is out of the way, but still the adapter kind of blocks the selfie screen. You're getting a better idea of what the frame looks like, but it's still a so-so solution. There's some wind out here right now, but the foam wind muff should take care of most, if not all, of the wind noise. 
Now on the G3X side, you shouldn't have a problem with wind noise at all because the wind muff that comes with the Broad Video Micro is of such high quality that I consider it pretty much the perfect wind muff for that microphone. This is external audio on the EOS M3 manually leveled to selfie distance. My voice should drop in volume when I'm back here and return to normal volume once I'm about selfie distance away. Same test with the Canon G3X. I manually leveled the external audio to about selfie distance. So again, my voice should drop in volume when I'm back here and return to a normal pleasant volume once I'm about selfie distance away from the camera. My favorite vlogging lens for the EOS M3 is the 11 to 22. It's built of a very high quality plastic material and comes with a metal mount. Before you can hit record, you have to extend it to the shooting position. Let's say you want to know what time it is, but you forgot your watch and there's nobody around to ask. But in the far distance, you can see a clock tower. This is what the 11 to 22 can do for you. It's a little closer, but not yet of any help. The kit lens is a standard 18 to 55 millimeter zoom lens with a metal mount and built of the same high quality plastic material like all the STM M lenses. This is the kit lens at 18mm, now let's see what 55mm can do for us. Maybe if you got really good eyes, you can spot the time, but for me it's still not close enough. The 55 to 200 is the third lens I'm using with the EOS M3. It's also built of the high quality plastic material, but this lens comes with a plastic mount. Alright, this is 55mm and here we go to the full 200. It's actually a pretty decent zoom range, but still, my eyes aren't the best and I'd like to get closer. So let's see what the super zoom lens of the G3X can do for us. It's a 25x image stabilized zoom with a full frame equivalent zoom range of a 24 to 600 mm When turning the camera on, it extends a little. So this is the wide end of the G3X and off we go. Time for a snack. Now with both cameras you can do beautiful and cool time lapses. On average they both gave me about a hundred minutes of video per battery charge. Now overall look and feel, I give it to the G3X any day of the week. The magnesium alloy body, completely weather sealed, the very deep grip and its weight are really contributing factors in myself loving this thing because I feel like the camera sits well in my hand and it just makes me feel secure in using it. Now the EOS M3 body is made of very high quality plastic materials. It's not a magnesium alloy but it still feels real nice. And the lenses are the same way. They're also made of high quality plastic materials but there's like no wiggle, they feel really really solid and really nice. So maybe this is an unfair comparison, if you just look at the EOS M3 in its build, it is actually really really good. It just pales a little if you directly compare it to a body as classy as that of the G3X. As far as button layouts go, on both cameras I think they make sense. There's neither too few nor too many buttons and they are for the most part easily reachable. I will say though that the mode dials on the G3X feel better to me when I use them than on the EOS M3. They feel nice, but just a little more plasticky than with the G3X. Both cameras have quick enough startup times, so 99% of the time you will get the shot. Something I really don't like with the G3X, both the record and the on off button are level with the body. Why not elevate them a little and make them easier to find and push? But compared to the record and play button of the EOS M3, the record button of the G3X is actually awesome. Seriously, I couldn't imagine a worse set of record and play buttons than the ones on the EOS M3. Pushing these two buttons just isn't easy. And it should be. I mean, they're plasticky, they're wiggly, you have to push them in real deep, they're just hard to push. So this is something I really hate about the EOS M3. I mean, come on. Something else that totally bums me out with both these cameras is this. If the plates are mounted, you cannot reach the SD card or the battery. I just hate that. If you're vlogging, it's not as much a problem as when you're studio shooting, because when you're studio shooting, you want to be able to access the SD card quickly. Now, as far as connectivity goes, both cameras are NFC ready and come with a Wi-Fi capability. They are both able to output an HDMI signal, come with a mini USB connector and have a remote control input. But the one important thing that sets the G3X apart from the EOS M3, not only can you input an external mic, you can also monitor your audio via headphones. 
So you've seen and heard a lot about what these cameras can and cannot do. And hopefully it helped you in your decision whether one of these or which one of these might be the one for you. If you're still struggling with the decision, maybe I can help you with a little recommendation of mine. If you're looking for the better vlogging camera, go EOS M3. It has the overall better autofocus, a wider angle lens if you skip on the kit lens and invest directly into the 11 to 22 STM-M lens. It has the better because more compact external audio setup and it is overall the smaller form factor. On the other hand, if you're looking for the overall better video camera that allows you to do different kinds of videography, go G3X. The super zoom range is really what sets it apart. Also the magnesium alloy body, its heavy build and the weather ceiling make this a camera you can take anywhere and almost do anything with. But as you've seen, you can also use the G3X for vlogging and if you invest in a second or even a third lens, you can also make the EOS M3 an all-purpose video camera. Still, and I'm pretty dead set on that, EOS M3 is the better vlogging camera, G3X is the better overall video camera. So hopefully this video helped you. If you liked it, please make sure to leave a thumbs up, it'd be greatly appreciated. Any kind of comment or feedback is welcome and I'll try to answer as quickly as possible. In any case, as always, thank you so much for your time, thank you for watching and hopefully see you in another video.